welcome to the lecture. We were discussing about the uh, about a method which we adopt to retrieve temperature of formation temperature of the hydrothermal fluid that give rise to mineral deposits. We have already uh, defined them fluid inclusions are tiny fluid filled cavities inside the host mineral the mineral in which they occur we call them as host mineral and they are trapped during the primary growth of these minerals uh, from the fluid and in uh, they do also form within the minerals at any time later after their formation on uh, healed uh, uh, cracks healed fractures within the minerals and we define them that they are fluid filled cavities they are the aliquots of the mother liquor just to recapitulate they display diverse shapes and sizes and they do have a very good contrast uh, optical contrast with the host mineral in which they occur and uh, just to just for a recapitulation this diagram represents the process in which the primary. So, we, we name we or we call these inclusions which are the part of the random three dimensional network as the primary inclusions. The primary inclusions and we when we take a section and study under the microscope we see these different inclusions getting focused at different planes uh, compared to the minerals which the, the fluid inclusions which are aligned on linear arrays. Uh, essentially the sections of the inclined fracture plane as it as it is shown here and uh, they are generally if if they uh, traverse across many such grains of this host mineral then we call them as the secondary inclusions. Uh, since we talk about the fluid from which the minerals uh, precipitate we would generally be focusing on the characteristics of these primary fluid inclusions, but sometimes the hydrothermal fluid activity take place in, in a manner in a protracted manner in episodic uh, growth of the hydrothermal vein like one like the one which is shown here, which makes even uh, if we can establish a continuum of the fluid activity in different phases in giving rise to mineralizations in different generations. Then the inclusions which occur as secondary inclusions in the older phase uh, host grains could also give useful information to us. In this diagram you can see that this, this is a typical example of the formation of hydrothermal uh, veins uh, in the normal crustal rocks in response to uh, fractures their fracture filling. So, on this we see that the first generation of quartz were deposited on the fracture wall. Then there was a second phase of fracturing and fluid flow and in which the second generation quartz are precipitated from a fluid and that fluid could could eventually be trapped as secondary inclusions in the earlier generation quartz and so on. So, this uh, diagram which has been taken from Wilkinson 2001 uh, from one of the research papers on hydrothermal deposits. So, this gives us a very clear idea as to the fluid uh, the fluid deposition process formation of the hydrothermal veins in different generations and the importance of the uh, hydrothermal uh, the importance of the study of the fluid inclusions. Sometimes it, it may so happen, but if the fluid activity takes place uh, with, a with a very substantial time gap and with no relationship to the earlier stages of fluid activity in that cases the secondary fluid inclusions will not of much use to us. Well, so uh, getting into the fluid inclusion types here it is shown on the diagram it is the case where it is a liquid plus vapor aqueous inclusion aqueous liquid and aqueous vapor which we can identify under the microscope from their optical properties and uh, this is a sketch of an aqueous inclusion which may occur uh, with number of such mineral phases which are called as the daughter phases we can see here like a halite sodium chloride this is potassium chloride this is a calcium carbonate calcite this is anhydrite it, even this can also happen a uh, sulfide a chalcopyrite small grain of chalcopyrite also within the within the inclusion cavity. This represents the the wall of the inclusion which is uh, essentially behaving as a closed system. This is just a case that in the compared to the situation here where the fluid could be visualized as having very little concentration of the other dissolved species. 
as against that this inclusion represents a fluid which was originally very very briny or very concentrated in many dissolved solids and which gave rise to the this kind of uh, mineral phases precipitating out in the inclusion cavity after the entrapment of this particular fluid. This is an example of a situation where an aqueous liquid and a carbonic liquid are present indicating that this must be a situation where the fluid had a appreciable concentration of carbon dioxide which we will be discussing. They may also occur as monophase conditions only a liquid or a vapor. So, here are some some real uh, and some uh, some uh, photographs from fluid inclusions as they are observed in host minerals. This is an example of uh, aqueous y phase inclusion where the uh, vapor and the liquid are labeled as V and L and you could see from the uh, micron bar which is 20 micron and you can imagine what could be the maximum dimension of this. And what I mean by having a optical contrast with the host uh, grain, you could see a very clearly demarcated boundary or the wall inclusion wall within which the inclusion is present. And this is an example of a mixed uh, inclusion where it is a uh, water or liquid water, liquid carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide vapor. The significance of these inclusions will be discussed in the course of this discussion. So, then let us see what, what are the host minerals in which we see the minerals. In fact, any mineral that is crystallizing from a fluid is likely to trap the inclusion. Only it is our capability to see the inclusions under, under the microscope in which kind of light, because we know that there are sulphide minerals or oxide minerals, ore minerals which are opaque to uh, normal visible range of the light, whereas the silicate minerals like quartz or carbonate like calcite or fluorite, apatite kind of gang minerals, sometimes they are even observable in uh, in, uh, many other uh, gang minerals, but the majority of the fluid inclusion work is actually uh, on quartz, which is a ubiquitous host in many of the ore deposits in oxide and sulphide deposits uh, as we see them. So, 90 percent of the fluid inclusion work are on quartz, other host minerals are calcite, fluorite, apatite, rarely garnet, cordierite, scapolite, and so on. So, as I Discuss, as I pointed out that these fluid inclusions could be in primary growth zones, could be as part of the random three dimensional network as I shown in the diagram. They could be on the heel fractures inside a single grain of the host or these kind of fractures could be uh, transgressing through many grains when they when the fracturing has taken place after the formation of the hydrothermal vein or the ore body. Uh, they are the transglandular heel fractures. So, in these cases when the minerals are present in primary growth zones or in part of the random three dimensional network, we call them as primary inclusions. And uh, when they are present on uh, linear arrays uh, on the healed uh, cracks or fractures uh, traversing through many grains within the host minerals, we call them as the secondary inclusions. This is general terminology which we follow in fluid inclusion uh, literature as primary and secondary, although it becomes sometimes uh, not a very easy uh, task to uh, distinguish them. And uh, the heel fractures inside a single grain of the host sometimes is, is uh, we use a word as a pseudo secondary, because essentially it represents the fracture which is uh, within the single grain of the host mineral, which is not uh, uh, transgressed through many uh, through the entire. Uh, but entire uh, body of the quartz vein or the ore body, uh, there we use a word as pseudo secondary. Otherwise, the broad classification of the inclusions to primary and secondary is having a connotation of time that the primary inclusions which formed during the growth or during the formation of the host mineral and the secondary inclusions formed any time afterwards. So, is I study them in, in the in the laboratory by using doubly polished thin sections of a certain thickness because these inclusions are several tens of microns in dimension. So the uh, thickness of the section should be uh, should be at least four five times the maximum dimension expected. So generally they are 200 to 300 micron in thickness 
we study them under the microscope at high magnification and then we do an experiment which is essentially we call as microthermometry and other non destructive analysis or sometimes we can do some destructive analysis by opening the inclusions or taking the sample taking the inclusion fluid out of the host mineral and analyzing them using many sophisticated analytical equipment. Uh, we shall will be discussing about the microthermometric technique which is the uh, which is the which provides the most fundamental uh, and the first level uh, information on this fluid inclusions. Uh, so, we before we uh, look into the fluid inclusion exercise and the data that we retrieve from them, uh, we uh, let us first see the, the assumptions that we uh, make before we proceed on to study the fluid inclusions. That the inclusions behave as closed system since the entrapment, there is no loss or gain of any component with the surrounding in the within the host mineral and the inclusions behave as a closed system and have followed a constant density, constant volume, constant composition path which is called as a iso core and inclusions are trapped essentially from a homogeneous fluid and the entrapment, entrapment process is essentially homogeneous. So, the figures that I showed you here, this figure essentially whatever is uh, where we are seeing them as heterogeneous assemblies, but these all are the post entrapment phase changes that we see in these inclusions rather than the inclusion being trapped in this condition. The entrapment uh, is essentially homogeneous and the fluid, the entrapment is from a homogeneous fluid and also the entrapment process is homogeneous. Uh, we will be able to uh, uh, explain the formation of this uh, fluid inclusions in a very simple uh, manner here. What I could see here, so this is a unary phase diagram of water, uh, here is the critical point. Uh, corresponding to 374 degree centigrade and 220, 220 bar. So, this is the vapor stability field, this is the this is the liquid water stability field. Let us assume that there is a temperature and pressure conditions to P 1 and T 1, where this mineral precipitated from a fluid on a fracture or any rock that is in the uh, in the subsurface. And when this mineral is once it is trapped, it is behaving as a constant density, constant composition uh, 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 system without any exchange of component with a host mineral. And then the, the condition at which we are uh, seeing them in the laboratory is different from the condition where it was entrapped. And uh, since the path that it follows is an isochoric path that means, a constant uh, slope d p by d t path. So, it follows a straight line path with the decrease in pressure and temperature conditions with larger in larger decrease in pressure with smaller de in decrease in temperature and it evolves in the same one phase condition without undergoing any phase change till the till the till it reaches a point here which corresponds to the boiling curve of pure water. So, here the liquid and vapor. So, this curve corresponds to the liquid vapor coexistence or which we call as a boiling curve and as in when it intersects the point here a vapor small vapor bubble nucleates from this within this with inclusion cavity. This can be explained on the basis of the differential contraction of the host mineral and the liquid because liquid has got a higher coefficient of thermal expansion than the host solid uh, or it could also be explained on the base purely on the basis of this phase diagram that as and when it intersects the point here one vapor gets the vapor bubble gets nucleated and it, com it comes into existence. So, from a homogeneous entrapped condition, now it attains a heterogeneous state with a liquid plus vapor. Any further decrease in the pressure and temperature would make it move on this boiling curve, because it cannot leave the boiling curve as, as, as long as the vapor and liquid are coexisting and with further decrease in the pressure and temperature will only result in an enlargement of this originally trapped tiny bubble till the point it reaches here corresponding to the room temperature where we are observing it, where we see that this inclusion is uh, the way we see this a vapor and a liquid. So, this is how we can we can explain the entrapment process of fluids during the uh, mineralization process and assuming that the host mineral which was precipitating here was also precipitating along with our ore minerals and that represents the thermal characteristics as well as the chemical characteristics of the ore fluid 
during the mineralization. So, this is entrapment condition. So, what this diagram uh, how we can use this diagram in retrieving the temperature. So, considering the fact that this happens in a process of entrapment like in the way we have depicted, if we reverse the process for example, if we heat this particular inclusion uh, while observing under the microscope by using our appropriate devices which I will not be discussing here for, for the sake of brevity. And uh, so, what exactly is expected here is that as we increase the temperature, this is also going to follow the same path which it followed during the time of its entrapment and post entrapment uh, phase change. So, the vapor bubble will gradually grow smaller and smaller and smaller and till the time that till the it reaches the point here where the vapor bubble is going to disappear and it is supposed to follow the same uh, further heating uh, it, is, it is supposed to follow the same isochoric path. So, the temperature at which the fluid uh, becomes homogeneous from this condition to a point here where the vapor bubble will disappear we will call this temperature is the temperature of homogenization. That means, from a heterogeneous condition the inclusion attains a homogeneous condition and so that we call it as a temperature of homogenization. Any further increase in temperature will make the inclusion follow this particular uh, isochoric steep isochoric path. And then when we further increase we, we do not have any constraint to reach at P 1 T 1. So, there is the limitation. So, the, the temperature corresponding to T 1 if we drop the perpendicular over here this should be the temperature was temperature of trapping or the temperature of formation of the particular uh, uh, inclusion. We, we say that it is the the temperature of homogenization or T H and that is that is corresponding to the, the point at which the vapor bubble disappears and temperature of entrapment or temperature of trapping which we represent as T T and so here, here actually uh, what we are uh, representing here that if we drop a perpendicular from here this will be the temperature of homogenization that is T H and if we drop a perpendicular from here it will intersect the abscissa on the point which will be T T and there will be difference some difference of the temperature between the temperature of between the T H and T T. So, if we are relying on only this experiment then we will be missing the temperature of formation or the temperature of trapping by a few degrees and it all depends on the slope of this isochore will tell as to how much uh, will by how much we will be missing the actual temperature of formation. Uh, <coughs> here if we uh, if we have any independent consideration of temperature or pressure for example, if we are uh, carrying out this fluid inclusion exercise on a particular mineral which itself can indicate pressure like sphalerite which uh, whose composition is an is a, is a function of pressure mole percent of uh, sphalerite uh, uh, under a certain conditions is sensitive to pressure and the pressure could be determined. And if we are doing this fluid inclusion exercise on a mineral like sphalerite or any other mineral for that matter which can indicate pressure then we, we have a constraint to, uh, to stop here or to get this particular point of pressure of trapping and from which we can drop a perpendicular on the axis to get the temperature of trapping. So, this is the story of a single fluid inclusion and we actually measure a innumerable number of such inclusions in a in a in a in an ore body to get a, a range of uh, temperature uh, for the formation for the uh, for the mineralization process and that that gives us a. So, first of all when we talk about the fluid source and we have uh, we have uh, we have characterized the different fluid sources like meteoric, magmatic, metamorphic, juvenile and so on. We can get some fast end information as to what kind of a fluid we are essentially dealing with by the time we are finishing the microthermometry exercise on a large number of inclusions on the minerals that we have taken from an ore body. Uh, this is a very simple uh, diagram, but uh, fluid 
crustal fluid is very complex uh, mixture like uh, like if, if if we see this table this is a this gives us uh, some idea about the general chemical characteristics of hydrothermal fluid. We see that uh, it actually represents a whole spectrum. So, where the concentration of a chloride ion can go from 0 0.03 to greater than 7 uh, moles per kg, sulphate 10 to the power minus 10 to 0.3, sulphide NH3, carbonate, acetate, propionate, oxalate, malonate. This is uh, giving a, a it is of course, not exhaustive list of the chemical species that, that could be present in a hydrothermal fluid, but it is a very complex mixture of many dissolved solids, anions and cations. Uh, and this gives us an idea and and from that uh, we can uh, know that what kind of uh, con what considerations we have to take when we uh, actually are dealing with uh, the actual uh, real hydrothermal fluid which is a much complex brine and uh, complex mixture of many different phases and we have to understand the phase relations in many such systems uh, and from that we can interpret our data on the thermometry. Uh, thermometry. The uh, characteristics of the hydrothermal fluid in terms of the source we also characterize by the salinity and as we saw just on the table that uh, chloride constitutes uh, the dominant anion in many in many of the hydrothermal fluids that we uh, sample in different types of deposits. This diagrams this 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 uh, figure gives a very crude idea as to how we can estimate the, uh, the the salinity in terms of the total dissolved solid of any hydrothermal fluid which is sampled from the fluid inclusions in minerals. Similarly, we can uh, uh, the way we conduct the heating experiments, we can also conduct the uh, freezing or the cooling experiments and use very simple principles of colligative property of depression and freezing point to constrain the salinity or in terms of which is expressed as the weight percent equivalent of uh, NaCl. Here it is a part of a phase diagram of water NaCl binary where you where you can see the, the temperature at which pure water freezes at 0 degree centigrade and this particular cotectic curve represents the depression in the freezing point of the of water with increasing content in sodium chloride and on a binary this temperature represents the eutectic temperature corresponding to 23.3 weight percent of NaCl and minus 20.8 degree Celsius and on the NaCl rich side this uh, cotectic represents the coexist. So, this, this cotectic essentially represents the ice plus liquid curve in which the with increasing with the decreasing in temperature the liquid becomes richer or more concentrated with respect to sodium chloride and as in when the point eutectic E is reached the solid which is your uh, sodium chloride plus 2 H 2 O that is hydrohalite will form along with ice. And if it is on the NaCl rich side then it is already forming ice uh, hydrohalite plus liquid and the liquid is becoming less and less concentrated with respect to NaCl and as it when it reaches the eutectic temperature both so hydrohalite and ice crystallize. And if we consider the liquid which are essentially undersaturated or not saturated with sodium chloride. Uh, like the example which you took just before while discussing the heating experiment. So, we can do the experiment and freeze the inclusion and see at what exactly at what temperature the ice melts and we will be able to find out what what percentage or what weight percent of sodium chloride equivalent amount of sodium chloride will cause that depression in the freezing point and we can determine the salinity of this fluid. So, likewise we determine the salinity of a huge large number of inclusions aqueous inclusions which are present in the uh, host minerals, the host minerals could be quartz or any other host mineral or even sometimes it is also possible with some specialized techniques to study the fluid inclusions in uh, opaque minerals also and can retrieve such information on the uh, salinity and temperature characteristics of the fluid as constraint from this fluid inclusion study. We can represent the data because this is just for a for a, a uh, example because we can we, we once we measure a huge population of such inclusions we get ranges of temperature and we would like to plot them or represent or present them on a statistical making us some statistical uh, sense 
and we plot them as histograms and then find out that whether this fluid is essentially is coming from a one such population or coming from uh, more than one population with modes or the, uh, the temperature maxima more than one. So, this also gives us uh, some preliminary idea about uh, the process that is involved and uh, if you remember we uh, in one of our previous discussions we uh, saw that this hydrothermal mineralization process even though we identify diff many different fluid components, but the process sometimes involves uh, involvement of uh, more than one fluid types and it happens because of fluid mixing process as we will be discussing in a short while. So, this is the way we can represent the fluid inclusion microthermometric data. This is a diagram on which uh, uh, it is shown that the homogenization that we get could be of two different modes, the homogenization could be of the liquid uh, phase or could the could be to the vapor phase. For example, if the if the inclusion initially or the fluid was initially in a vapor vapor state, then any inclusion which is trapped over here will essentially be trapping a vapor and with decrease in temperature that vapor rich inclusion will give rise to liquid and only difference will be that if it is a vapor phase. entrapment then we will go we will only be getting uh, an inclusion where we will be getting a large vapor bubble as compared to in a liquid uh, liquid phase entrapment when we get a small vapor bubble. So, in such kind of a situation here what the homogenization behavior in this case is L plus V to L in this case it becomes L plus V to V or we call as vapor phase homogenization here it is liquid phase homogenization. So, this is essentially the uh, figure here is uh, which is not shown here, but could be uh, if, if the entrapment of the inclusion was in, in this field, then the homogenization also will be to the to the vapor and the isocores will be in the vapor region. And here what exactly we mean that if we get some such situations of uh, which will which I will be discussing a, uh, in a little while in the next class that there could be vapor phase homogenization and we would like to represent uh, the, what is the proportion or what is the statistical uh, statistically how many inclusions were homogenized, homogenized into liquid phase or how many to the vapor phase and what temperature range to uh, decipher something uh, very important in that respect. So, this uh, uh, in the context of the aqueous fluid uh, this diagram which we uh, which is constructed from a good number of or a substantial number or adequate number of uh, fluid inclusions where the microthermometric uh, study has been conducted they are plotted on a temperature versus salinity diagram which we essentially uh, call as a fluid evolution diagram. So, uh, if we take a hypothetical fluid representing uh, uh, hypothetical fluid over here then we can have several possibilities when we plot the uh, temperature versus salinity data that means the inclusions on which we have measured the temperature and also we have measured the salinity in terms of weight percent NSL equivalent we can plot them as scatter diagrams and depending on the nature of those scatter points we get certain well defined trends. So, this trend is shown here on the horizontal uh, arrows could be that they could be the mixing of different uh, the mix of fluids of different salinity this particular uh, trend would be for boiling this could be for cooling and this also could be for mixing. So, mixing of fluids boiling of the parent fluid and cooling or some such processes are, are very important uh, from uh, the mineralization process point of view and they are it is actually uh, the in, in addition to the uh, characteristics of the ore fluid it also is very important to know that how the fluid actually evolved because that actually caused the process of deposition of the minerals uh, which we will see them 
uh, uh, which we will continue discussing in the next class. Thank you.